will be honest though. I will. I feel like, you know, I I, I don't even know what, what to make of this game because obviously, um, the Packers are a tough team. We know that. We've known that. We've uh, clearly been talking about it for a while. But with something like this, what does this win mean? Because when you consider the fact that this is. I would say this is at least one like the closest I've seen the 49ers to being full strength, to which point they're like as close to they were as a couple years ago when they went to the Super Bowl. So like you take it from that perspective of last year they had a ton of injuries, but like on the flip side of that, like what does this win truly mean? I I, I think uh, clearly it's a big win, but I don't know if it's uh, I really don't uh, for for a team like the Packers. I mean, just as a fan, what's your general reaction? It's huge. It's a huge win. I feel like this game is looking at the rest of their schedule, this game was probably as close to, like, playoff atmosphere as you're going to get the whole season. Going into an extremely hostile environment against a healthy 49ers defense, um, that was a game I did not expect to win. I would have bet on the 49ers, even as a Green Bay fan. Um, I was genuinely surprised at how well Green Bay played. And uh, The 49ers secondary did suffer some injuries throughout the game, which definitely didn't help them out at all. But, um, yeah, it was huge. I feel like that's going to be a huge – Green Bay needed that. They needed a win like that where everybody came together and pulled through at the end. And Jimmy G, for as well as he played most of the night, he had some crucial, crucial errors. Um, That one where he tried to throw the ball away, but he threw it backwards and it was a fumble. That was terrible. And then – the other interception big, he had. Big play by, by Kenny Clark, though, though, by the way. Yeah, huge play. Um, yeah, a lot of guys showed up who uh, I didn't expect to show up. Chandon Sullivan played a really nice game, and they, they held Kittle in check pretty well, which Green Bay usually doesn't do too well with tight ends. But they mm-hmm. were able to keep him out of the end zone. They struggled a little bit with use check, uh, which I expected. But <laughs> By the way, do you know he went to Harvard? So, in other words, he like that's two things he has on us, Tristan. He, he went to Harvard. Like, which is one thing. So he's like, our, our combined IQ is doesn't touch his. And then also, number two, he's playing in the NFL. So, like, this guy wins at both ends of the spectrum. I don't know. I just saw that and I laughed. Um, but, no, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, you, you talk about a couple of errors by Jimmy G. Um, I honestly feel like, you know, I, clearly if they don't have those errors, I think they win the football game. But at the end of the day, everybody knew that uh, if Green Bay plays up to their strength, if they, you know, if Aaron Rodgers does his thing, I, I – I, I've, I'm hard pressed to find a team in the NFC that's as good as the Packers when things are going their way. Um, but I will say though that this is going to be a very. I think these two teams could meet up in the playoffs. Um, I really do think. I mean, it could be another one of those what 20, uh, 2019 NFC playoff, uh, NFC uh, championship playoff type things where it's like okay, you got two of the what the bet one of the best quarterbacks in the league, then you got one of the best defenses in the league, and you know I think you might uh, you might find a. Different uh, result, or it might be the same one. I don't know, but I, I think that this is a, this was a very good foreshadowing of what we could see. Great to see uh, Trey uh, Sermon do as well as he did. 10 carries, 31 yeah. yards, and a touchdown. Jimmy G finished 25 of 40, 257, two teddies and a pick, as well as uh, Aaron Rodgers. 23 of 33 doing his thing, uh, 261 and a teddy. Or excuse me, two touchdowns, I apologize. Um, and then you also got um, – and this one kind of threw me for a loop. Uh, as far as the uh, the 49ers – I just don't truly know what to make um, of their current quarterback situation. You got Trey Lance there. You got Jimmy G. uh, But I got to make something abundantly clear here. The 49ers are not only still a top team in the NFC. I think that, like we've said previously, this could be turned down to be a turn out to be a key playoff matchup. Um, And, you know, it's such a long season, especially with 17 games. Uh, but still, the 49ers, they have a good running game. They've got a defense. And I think Jimmy G can do enough to take them where they want to go. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think Jimmy G could do enough. But I do think they need to use Trey Lance more. There was, similarly to how the Saints used Jameis and Taysom, um, I feel like there's a lot of use for, for Trey Lance in that offense. They only used him on a couple downs. And one of those downs was a touchdown. Uh, so it's like... What's he got touchdown on like forty percent of his snaps this year? It's, um. it's crazy. I I honestly can't believe it. This man, I think he two, he uh, he threw a touchdown and then I uh, I'm blanking on some of the other things. But yes, I apologize. Go ahead. Yeah, they need to they need to get him more involved um, because when they when they put him in, it just it throws the defense for a loop because you know he can throw, you know he can run. You don't really know what to expect. You don't know if it's going to be a triple option, a play action. 
or if he's going to take it himself. So I feel like they need to incorporate him more, and I'm sure they will as the season goes on. And I thought what he was doing the whole game was pretty interesting. He was standing by the offensive coordinator, and I think it's kind of just like a practice for him to call the plays. After the, the OC or Shanahan would call the play, you could see Trey Lance repeating it to the OC like he was in the huddle. So maybe just trying to get into the rhythm of calling plays. I thought that was cool because I don't see a whole lot of that. But, yeah, yeah he's he's going to be ready to play when his time comes for sure. I I personally don't feel – even though Jimmy G did take them to a Super Bowl, um, a lot of the credit goes to the defense. Uh, their offense was good. Shanahan's genius. But um, Lance, if he can develop well and get some more playing time, I feel like he'll be – a lot better than Jimmy Garoppolo is. Uh, but, yeah, I just feel like they need to get him more involved in that offense. They can be more explosive. I definitely agree. I think integrating a guy like him with his abilities. Now, I think um, right now Jimmy G's the best like the best answer at starting quarterback right now, but I do agree yeah. with what you said about uh, him when he, once he gets his chance. And I think you're, you and I are on the same page of thinking that, you know, once he gets his chance, he's going to do very well. And that, and I think you might agree with me that Jimmy G is the best option right now, which, yeah. uh, which I think, you know, and, and you talk about Trey Lance being incorporated all those different ways, you know, I threw a five yard touchdown pass in week one um, against the lions and then came back against the Packers had a one yard touchdown run. So yeah, literally <laughs> it's crazy to think about that, you know, the three snaps, this guy already has are through four snaps, the 50% of his snaps are touchdowns. That's crazy. You know, when you think about it, but you know, I I think it is uh, something they have to integrate more because this offense already integrates a lot with guys like Debo Samuel, yeah. uh, Brandon Ayuk, and those those boys, and Trey Sermon. So this offense is already hard enough to stop. So if you uh, you know you like you said you put another guy like Trey Lance in there, um, I think it could be very detrimental to defenses in, in the entire NFL. That's a lot of speed, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so it's you're, you're right. Kyle Shanahan is a genius in terms of his play calling and um, his ideas because I think you know it's one thing to like fool a defense but it's a whole nother thing to just like like uh, have so many weapons it's just like who are you going to guard 